Welcome everyone to New 26 Harmony Kingdom. It's mid-season time, which means it's time to go on a little break. But before we do that, we must talk about this week's episode. Which, for me, as of the timing of recording of this video, just concluded. The episode called Spice Up Your Life, episode 130. Yes, 130 focuses on the return of the cutie map. <laughs> well, kinda. It's on the fritz right now. But the one friendship assignment it did give out properly was the Pinkie Pie and Rarity. These two seem like an odd couple. They have unique approaches to dealing with a problem. And this problem has to do with a father-daughter restaurant duo. Yeah, they're chefs. Yeah, you can kind of say this is ratatouille for ponies, because pretty much the moral of the story about criticism and about being unique despite criticism and understanding that criticism is just that, criticism, it's just my thoughts on anything, or anybody's thoughts. You don't have to follow it if you don't want to. But, I appreciate the fact that, for some of you, you do appreciate what I say as a critic. Whether it be as a pony reviewer, or as a video game reviewer, or a TV show reviewer. That's what I like to do. But, when you grow as a reviewer and you grow a reputation, your criticism can often be taken as a word of law. Which, which was the entire point of the critic here, similar to that of Ratatouille. She had grown a world-renowned reputation all throughout Canterlot, every restaurant wanting to attain our famous three stars, but the tasty treat, however, had not been rated yet. Why? Because it looked too out there. It was out in the boonies. And it made Indian food. Of sorts. But the father has no confidence in the business at the start while the daughter has been trying to do everything she physically can to get noticed without any prevail. That's where Rarity and Pinkie Pie come into the equation. Rarity, because of her connections in Canterlot, might seize the potential that the restaurant has, but also respects the critic too much and, go, and goes about changing the restaurant to match the critic. This, however, is a contradictory writing decision on, on the parts of the writer for this episode because it directly contradicts the moral from Canterlot Boutique. Trust me. Go back and watch the episode. Or watch my review of it, if you please. It completely contradicts Dicks the moral of it, and it shames Rarity's character because of it. Her need and want to take control of the situation hurts the situation ultimately. Although she is able to get to get our world-renowned critic to the tasty treat, it completely backfires when it looks completely the same like other restaurants. And because of mismanagement, she runs out of there like Gordon Ramsay in an episode of Kitchen Nightmares. Only when, only when they try to take Pinky's approach to get the viewpoints of the people of Canterlot, why do they manage to fill the restaurant and the restaurant gets glowing reviews? By seemingly every other restaurateur in in the famous restaurant row. 
And they all collectively tell the critic where to shove it and decide to do do things their own unique and personal way. As I've been doing this channel for the last seven years and I've been doing rather unique views on especially video games, that's what I pride myself on. I don't pride myself on being right or wrong. Hell, I don't want to be right or wrong. I want to be unique. I want the criticism to mean something to you. I take pleasure in this job. Like like the mother like the daughter and father take pride in cooking. After because of their infighting, through their cooking they reconnect. It's a it's a beautiful thing to see, although rushed, and it proves that rarity can rush the judgment and make make rash decisions while Pinkie Pie, of course, is being the sensible one. The odd couple strangely works out. Even if it doesn't look like one of them is suited for the job. After all, this needed some TLC. And Rarity's not really good at that when it doesn't involve clothes. The song, It's Gonna Work, is a beautiful Indian-style track. It almost feels straight-up ripped out of Bollywood. Its catchy beat, beaten, beaten lyrics are hypnotizing. You almost want to belly dance to it. It's one of the more high-energy tracks that this show has provided and definitely a win for a mid-season stopper. Although the moral is ultimately great, especially for those in the Valley of Criticism and how they look at themselves, Spice Up Your Life is also a moral lesson in following your own unique traits, not following the trends, that even though you want to be a part of something, and sometimes it's better to be with the herd in some situations, uniqueness always wins out, and doing it your way can earn the appreciation of those that matter, not the critics but those that truly appreciate your work because it's unique, because it stands out, and because it's different. So the moral is simply this. Dare to be different. Something that, well, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has executed over six years. It dared to be different than other girls' shows six years ago, like I dared to be different than any other YouTube review channel. And we both have succeeded at it. Although Rarity's role, role is totally contradictory and sometimes unnecessary, Pinky in her positive attitude ends up saving this episode in terms of the main characters, the sub-characters are played perfectly and fit into the attitude of not only the restaurant, but their own individual taste. Zesty is a wonderful character that stands out as ambitious and forward-thinking. Thinking while the food critic is ripped almost straight out of Ratatouille, but play plays a perfect role here. Your the episode's not perfect, especially with with rare rarity's attitude and contradictions to the moral of Canterlot boutique, but a strong strong Indian inspired song, strong stronger moral moral and emphasis on uniqueness make this a episode a watch. Although not although 
not the best. It certainly was, as everything was, unique. That's why I'm willing to give Spice of Your Life, episode 130, <laughs> here's the critic part in me, a 4 out of 6. This episode may not be as rewatchable as others in this half season, but it's a fine way to close it out as we take a respite for a bit. And that's always nice. If you enjoyed this video and this critique, make sure to hit the like button. Or if you want to see more of the critiques, the new 26 playlist for not only this season, but the last two await you in the channel page. Or, if you want more of my video game and TV show reviews, go to Kedic Reviews. You might find something more to your liking there. As for the new 26, it will be back when the hiatus is over. But you can expect... Spec new pony panels, and a few old school season 1 and season 2 re reviews as we wait. Plus many other stuff that I have planned. So, until we see each other next week, especially for that thing called E3, find peace in your own nirvana, and thanks for watching, and... It would be remiss without me saying thank you for seven years of Code Equestria fun. Now on to year number eight.